What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divos? What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Welcome back. Y'all already know what time it is. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back. It is Real Talk Wednesday. Hope everybody's having a great day whenever you're watching this. Many blessings. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy holidays to everybody. Y'all, girls. Can y'all believe Thanksgiving going to be tomorrow? Because when y'all watch this, Thanksgiving going to be tomorrow. I'm like, I'm just sitting here like, I'm sitting here really pissed off right now because, girl, I am really pissed off right now, okay? <sighs> when I tell y'all I'm really pissed off right now, I am really pissed off right now because Thanksgiving is this week, okay? And I'm pissed off because why I always got to be the one that always got to cook everything? Like, I'm, like, so over Thanksgiving. I'm really wishing that that shit was, like, every three years. Like, once every three years. This every fucking Thursday, every Thursday in November or every third Thursday in November, once a year shit, is really gotten played out. Like, it's not even trending no more. Like, they really need to do something different for the holidays now because I'm over Thanksgiving. I'm over my legs being tired of standing up. I'm fucking over standing there, my back hurting. I'm over the fact that by the time it's time to eat, I don't even want to eat that shit no more. I'm over the fact that when it's time for the end of the night to move on, I've got to be the one to find the containers and put this shit away and figure out puzzle piece that shit in the refrigerator. I'm tired of the shit. Okay? I'm over Thanksgiving. It needs to be like every three years. Like, I could do Christmas every year. You know, I could do Christmas every freaking year. But the one thing that I cannot do every Christmas is huh putting up them goddamn inflatables and taking them down and all the shit that's in the house down. Like, it seemed like taking it down be a task. It be motherfucking Easter, and some people still have their shit up for, for Christmas. Like, straight up. One year, I kid you not, one year, I think I didn't take that shit down until it was, like, February, okay? It was, like, February something, and I did, not even February 1st, February 2nd. It was February something, and I still had my Christmas decor up. A bitch was like, fuck it, I'm going to just keep this shit up until next Christmas, okay? Yes, I took down the shit that was outside. Like, I I hate taking shit the fuck down. Like, it seemed like it take uh, just about as long to take it down than it do take it up. And I used to be the one that was always like, yay, it's Christmas time. I'm going to over-decorate. When I say over-decorate, okay, so when I was living in New York, I really couldn't have no decorations like inflatables like that. Like, yeah, I had my own house, not mine's, but shit, it was, we was the only people living in the shit. But, you know, I rented a house. But so, like, I didn't have no no lawn. Like, my lawn was, like, this big, okay? It was, like, this wide. So what was I putting on there? It was the lawn, that piece of a lawn. Like, the lawn, okay, kid you not, the lawn was, like, this big, okay? It was probably enough for one inflatable. And when I say one inflatable, I'm not talking about one of those nice big inflatables. I'm talking about one of those little uh, family dollars. Dollar, okay, family dollar inflatables that's like five, six, seven dollars. Now, because of the economy, it's probably like $25, okay? But you know, one of those little toddler inflatables that's like two feet tall, it was it was good for that. And so, and even if I was to put one out there, that should have been going by the next day, okay? Straight up. So, and then I had the porch, and then I had my house. So there was really what was I gonna do? Like put it in the driveway? Like there was no place for me to put an inflatable and even if there was a place for me to put an inflatable i guarantee you like i said that shit would be gone by the next day so when we moved out here you know i was going all out so the first year that i lived out here i got an inflatable i never forget it. he was a snowman girl i thought i was doing my big 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 one with that one fucking snowman like you can scroll back like 11 years okay on my instagram and you will see that fucking snowman picture that i posted up on instagram like i had the audacity to post that shit like it was really something but i was proud that i could have an inflatable meanwhile i got all this yard space left that i could put some other shit but no i had this one snowman but it didn't matter as the years went on now a bitch got like nine inflatables. There's even no room for no more inflatables. My kids be like, where are you going to put them? When I tell you that I'm the one that is so excited every year about putting this shit the fuck out, this year I'm not. I'm not. I feel like I'm just getting older. And I really feel like there should be an age limit for Thanksgiving. Like when I say age limit, meaning 
Yes, I am the mother, and I've been doing Thanksgiving every year forever, making Thanksgiving buffets in my goddamn house. Last Thanksgiving, I made two Thanksgivings. I made a whole buffet for here, over here, and I made one for my daughter-in-law's house, you know, because my son, he run his mouth so much, he really don't get along with none of my other daughters, so... I couldn't really invite them over, so I had to make them their own Thanksgiving, okay? Their funds was tight, and I made sure that I made their Thanksgiving right, okay? So I made them a buffet, and I made us a buffet. Can you imagine how tired I was? Now, this year, I don't have to do any of that shit, but I'm really feeling like this. There should be an age limit on the grand cooker, I'm the, and I'm calling myself the grand cooker because I do all the motherfucking cooking, so I'm the grand cooker, okay? And I feel like there should be an age limit, like... At a certain age, we shouldn't have to do that shit no more. And I'm 50. So I want to know, when is the fucking age limit for me? Because I, I promise you, I am not going to be like 65 years old, standing over the stove talking about, yeah, I'm making for um, Thanksgiving this year. Like, no. There's got to be an age limit. There's definitely got to be an age limit. I can't do it. Like, I'm, it's just Monday. And by the time y'all watch this, I'm going to be really pissed the fuck off. Because I'm going to be tired. I'm going to be tired. And y'all know that I don't exercise like that. Like, yeah, I've been going on my walks every day for the past three weeks now. Proud of myself. I'm so proud of myself. My granddaughter went with me today. Today is Monday. My little granddaughter went with me today because she stayed home. But my little, my little granddaughter went with me today because she wasn't feeling too well, so she didn't go to school. Daycare school, whatever you want to call it. So I took her. And I pushed her in her stroller. I'm proud of myself for that. I've been going on my walks. But my legs are not that strong to where I want to be standing up, cutting and cooking all day long. Like, starting Tuesday or what have you. Now, tomorrow is Tuesday. So, normally, I start on a Tuesday. it would be making potato salad, macaroni salad, and pies. I ain't making all that shit this year. I'm not. It's just going to be me and my daughters who live in this house. And ain't nobody invited over here. Okay? If you come over here, you best to bring your own plate because you ain't coming here and having none of these plates because I'm not trying to go all out this year. I'm, I'm like, seriously, I'm tired already just thinking about Thanksgiving. Okay? So happy holidays to y'all motherfuckers and happy Thanksgiving. And I hope y'all got y'all shit together by the time tomorrow comes. Okay? Yes. Who you inviting over and all that good stuff. So as y'all can tell, I've been, I got my, my, my little partial, my partial teeth in. And now it's been a week. It's been a week today that I've been you know, having these teeth in. Now, when I tell you, first of all, it make your mouth real dry. And I thought it was just me. I really thought that, okay, bitch, you got to stop smoking. You smoke too much weed. You smoke too much because your mouth is like hot. And like, this is what I'm thinking, but I don't even smoke like that. Like, okay, yeah, I might be a little bit on it right now because I was smoking. That's why my eyes is red, but it make your mouth dry. And I'm constantly sipping on water, sipping on water, chewing gum. And I'm not even, I really can't even chew the gum like that with these in my mouth. I got to like simmer. The, the gum just got to simmer in my mouth until I can get used to chewing with these in my mouth and eating with these. But anyway, it's been a week. And so today is Monday on Friday. Friday, I went back to the dentist because like I was saying, you guys, they are going to have to do some adjustments. So if you guys are familiar with dentures, people that wear dentures, these are partial dentures. So you have to get used to them. Your mouth is like you have to train your mouth to get used to these because it's a foreign object in your mouth. And in order for your brain, your mouth to get used to it, your brain has to teach your mouth. That's that's the only way that I can explain it to you because that's the way the damn dentist explained it to me. And I get it. Just like when I first got my crowns in my mouth, when I first got my crowns, right, of course I had regular teeth in my mouth, but they shaved my teeth down. The crowns didn't feel like the same texture as my own original um, teeth. You know what I'm saying? They was just so, they just felt so smooth in the back. So I was constantly taking the tip of my tongue and just rubbing it on the back of my, my crowns over and over until my, I got so tired of tasting the back of the tooth. It started tasting like metal in my mouth. It or just this weird taste. It was the only way I could describe it is this weird taste. But I would constantly take my tongue and just rub it on the back of the teeth over and over. And it was like this bad habit. Even though I disliked it, I just kept doing it, right? I don't know how long it took me to stop doing that, but I guess my brain finally tricked my mouth like these belong here. And so, you know what I'm saying? It seems like every time I get a new crown, I do that. But anyway, for, for this in my mouth, I always, I'm constantly taking the top, the tip of my tongue and I'm rubbing, I'm taking the tip of my tongue and rubbing the top of my mouth with it. And now I can definitely feel this in the top of my mouth and it feels like annoying. And I think that's what makes my mouth get dry is me constantly doing that. Even with like that little tooth that I made my little Amazon tooth, I would do the same thing with my tongue back of it constantly. And it would just start making, it felt like it was making my tongue feel like really weird. 
And I'm 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 like not over this whole experience of this partial denture, but God damn, I need to get used to it. So Friday I took him back because he did say I was going to need to get like adjustments, but he wanted me to wear them for a couple of days. In. So that way when I did bring it back, I would be in I would be able to pinpoint where on that particular partial is bothering me. You know what I'm saying? So when I went back Friday, I had to tell her like, girl, when I was putting the shit in, oh my God, when I would put it in, it would take my face, like my mouth, like 15 minutes to relax. My face with my whole mouth was hurting. It felt like I was having like this really bad toothache when I would put it in, when I would pop them in. And it would just hurt so bad. Finally, this side would feel normal, but this side, my right side, it would hurt so bad. It would feel like it was just throbbing, throbbing, throbbing. And <clears throat> I just was just trying to force myself to get used to it, right? So I realized what was really bothering me. So I went back and I told her about that. And then I also told her about like the front tooth, how the piece of skin that y'all made, the piece of a gum that y'all made look like a piece of gum. It's too wide. It's too wide. And it's pushing against my other crown, making it feel like there's pressure on my tooth, which is hurting. And I ain't about to lose my goddamn other front tooth. Okay. So when I brought it back, she like, you could hear her. She took it to the, you know, the next room, the dentist, and you could hear her. She's either using like a nail file or a drill, something like that, just to shave the size out. So when she brought it back to me, she had to go back like maybe like two times. And then this side was perfect. Like it was no pressure, but I still have to bring it back because I can feel it. Like it's longer. It comes up more than this side. Like the only way I can describe it is it's longer in the back versus this side. Like why y'all got this side like mad long and I could do it myself, but I'm not about to do all that. So I figured it out. Like after she shaved it down for me, she ain't buff it out and make it smooth or nothing to plastic. She just gave it back to me all rigid and shit. So when I came home, Tati had some new um, Emery boards and buffers, and I just buffed it out and made it nice and smooth. And then I also took a little bit more skin off the tooth right here just to make it even easier. But the one thing that I'm really not feeling about it, now all of my teeth are even. Like if y'all see, this is a crown. 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 Like all of these teeth are crowned on my top, except for one. Okay. But they're even like you see where this is even well when i put this when this locks in and then it goes all the way where it's at this tooth right here it doesn't sit flush with this one like it's not even like it's not it's not flush with it and i and i'm y'all might not notice it but it's pissing me the fuck off and i know my crown that broke it that shit was flush they was all motherfucking even so i'm gonna need y'all to fix this tooth because i i need it to be just the same height, length, and width as as these right here. Okay, that little tiny centimeter. Yeah, I'm gonna need that shit. I'm gonna need that shit. But anyway, other than that, like I was saying, my granddaughter, she didn't go to school today, school, daycare, school, whatever you want to call it. She was uh my daughter brought her to her mommy, my daughter Tati brought her to the doctors. Turns out she has the flu. Now, here's the thing. We was already hugged up and booed up with one another. And I can't remember when my flu shot was, but I know that shit about to expire or either gonna or did expire. And I cannot go backwards. When I say this, like two years ago, I got the flu for the first time in my life real fucking bad. And I had never had a flu shot in my life and never had the flu. But two years when I got the flu, girl, I was sick. I was on my ass, okay? When I tell you that was the worst I've ever felt, that was the worst I've ever felt. So I got a flu shot the following year because, look, I ain't trying to go out like that again. I'm, I'm not trying to spend three three weeks to a month sick. And when I tell you it takes like a couple of months to recover from that shit, it takes like a couple of months to recover from that shit. So after this video, I'm going to go to the grocery store, Fry's, Kroger's at the pharmacy and get me a flu shot. Just call them. They said you can just walk right in. You can give me a flu shot and you can give me a fucking COVID shot too because that following year, that following, that, that same year, I had COVID too, but I wasn't even sick. I thought they was fucking with me. The people that gave me the test, I thought they was lying to me and telling me I had COVID because I was not even sick like that. It was like a very slight cold. It felt like my allergies was bothering me. That's what it felt like. But yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna need to get both of those because I'm not trying to go out like that. What I'm saying is me and my little granddaughter, we was already booed the fuck up. We was booed up. When I say we was booed up, meaning she didn't already hug and kissed on me yesterday, today. We was on my walk. You know, I was pushing her in a stroller. She said she wants some water. I let her drink from my cuppy. I went and drank behind her. 
I already feel like I'm feeling it, okay? Please, dear God, please pray for me because I do not want to get sick, okay? I do not want to get sick, can't afford to get sick, don't need to get sick, please. I don't want to get I don't want to get sick. So anyway, today's video is being sponsored by she Glam, okay? She Glam. Y'all know I love She Glam. They got some really nice makeup. I just finally did a finally did a full face She Glam makeup look video the other day that I have to edit, okay? But if you have never heard of She Glam, girl, where you been at? Girl, where you been at? She Glam has some amazing makeup, very affordable, animal cruelty free as well. And this year, if you are a lover of makeup or know somebody that is a lover of makeup, you want to check out their new Festival Glow gift sets, okay? These are so pretty. This highlight and glow is a gift set, and they sent me two of them along with their liquid blush. Now, this liquid blush is very bright. Right? The color that they sent me, girl, y'all see that? Very orange. But also, they did send me is this color, too. You can actually take this and hang it from a tree, an ornament. This is Rose Ritual, and this one is called Glass Heart. Okay, so Rose Ritual and Glass Heart. Let's try out this Rose Ritual. Well, that's a pretty color blush. Now, that's a pretty color blush. Okay, I'm feeling that. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this color on the side. Now listen, I have become a, like a huge lover of cream and liquid blush, especially because I have learned the trick of putting it on, okay? I like to use this little sponge right here. That's a pretty color and it's buildable too, so I like this. I like this. Now we're going to try the highlight out. So this is actually in highlight. And it's so weird because look at the, it's like a doe foot. And this is called Glass Heart. So we have Glass Heart, which is definitely giving like glass, clear, glossy. This is definitely like a gloss for your skin. This is what I'm feeling about Glass Heart. Inside, it does come with these cute little jewels. Let's try out the next ones, Love Cake and Vanilla Frost. Okay, so we're going to try out Love Cake on this side. So it's like a lighter pink. And this is the liquid highlight. Whoa. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay, so this one right here, which one, this one, Vanilla Frost, is definitely highlighting, okay? This one is definitely highlighting. I do like the Glass Hearts, too, because it's just giving you, like, this glowy look without color or without sparkles. So I do like that. But um, Vanilla Frost, yes, girl, you are definitely coming through, okay? And then last but not least is their Liquid Blush that was sent to me in the color Orange Peel. And she already looking bright out the box. Very bright orange. I don't really think I want to try this one out just because I have one, two different colors. Girl, look, I'll start definitely looking like a clown. But this one is very bright. But you know what? Liquid blush and cream blush, if you just blend it right and then you, you use like some concealer over it. I don't know. I just was watching like this TikTok video, girl. And, you know, I had to learn how to do the, the liquid blush because, whoo, child. I have had my experiences with liquid blush, and it wasn't nothing nice to say about it. But I will tell y'all that you best to not want to do a full face powder before you use the liquid blush. But yeah, check out She Glam. They have like some amazing makeup. I love their stuff that they have. I like their packaging a lot. Their affordability is great as well. Is that as anything that is animal cruelty free, I'm down with. You know what I'm saying? Head on over to their website. I'll link everything below from what I was um, was sent for this video. But yeah. These are cute little gift sets. I love them. And like I said, they both come with some cute little jewels, too. So, yes, girl, um, She Glam has a lot of nice makeup, okay? A lot of really nice stuff. If you want to start a makeup collection, start right there, okay? Start right there. So, let's get on to this Real Talk. Today's video is going to be one Real Talk because you know why? I have to take my ass and go to the, door, the grocery store. I have a things that I need to do, but I also did want to get back to doing one Real Talk so that way, you know, 
I don't run through them as quick, you know, so I got to like savor them, save them up. But yes, today is going to be one real talk. If you want me to do a real talk for you, all you got to do is send it to Muffin is My Lovers 2012 at gmail.com. Or you can also send it to April's Real Talk at gmail.com. Y'all, let's get into this, okay? I tell y'all, I have to have a piece of candy in my mouth too right now because my mouth is feeling really, really dry and I'm really trying to get used to these teeth. So real talk, a shame. Hello, Miss April. You can call me Aspen for this video, please. My name is Aspen and I am 27 years old. I currently am working in the hospital as an ER nurse. I have no children. I'm in a committed relationship with my high school sweetheart. But right now we are waiting to get married in 2027 when we both turn 30. And, w- and then we do want to have children. We do live together if you are wondering. So anyway, this is about my mother. She is 52 years old. She is a 52 year old woman, has raised four children. I'm the eldest. And then I have two brothers and one younger sister sister whom is 15 and all three live at home with my mom everyone except my baby sister works in the household my mother owns a nice five-bedroom home and my mother is single and has been since she has divorced from my father back in 2018 so miss april you know my mother is an amazing woman she is a strong woman and has raised us to be great and honorable kids i just don't understand why my mother didn't go to college and get a degree and a career like myself or my other two siblings that are doing so I hate to say this, but I am so embarrassed by what my mother does for a living. She is a cashier at a local gas station here in Texas. As an older woman, you would think this job would would be beneath her as it is beneath me. I would never work at a place like this. Can you imagine all the different types of people that come to gas stations? When my colleagues ask about my family or my upbringing, I never mention my mom works as a cashier at a local gas station because I'm really afraid I will be made fun of and talked about. I've asked her time and time again why she doesn't look for better employment. Is she tired of working there and being on her feet every day? Like, I don't think anyone over a certain age should be working at a gas station or as a cashier, for that matter. I'm not saying... I'm not saying I'm too good to be working as a cashier, but you wouldn't catch me doing that such work, and I don't think my mother should be working as one either. Miss April, I honestly believe at a certain age... You should have a better career. You should be more established. Yes, she has a beautiful home. Her and my father built together, and he left that all paid for home for her. But she has no career, nothing. She works as a cashier at a gas station, and who doesn't want better and more for their own parent? The same way she wanted better for us, her children is the same thing I want for her. Sincerely, Aspen. Aspen, you got a lot of goddamn nerves. Like, I straight up. Like, you got some fucking nerve. Who just said your mother was a strong woman, a smart woman? She raised all y'all kids to be honorable. But then, yeah, you ashamed of the work she do for a living. Like, you should be ashamed of what you fucking sent to me in the email. First of all, a job is a job. That's why it's called a job, because somebody got to do that shit, right? Right or wrong? I ain't never thought I was too good to be a cashier. I ain't never thought I was too good to be a medical worker in the medical field doing, you know, health insurance. I never thought I was too good for none of that shit. I've been a cashier. I flip burgers. Okay, I've been a cashier several motherfucking times. And the fact that you could just say at a certain age, people don't need to be a cashier. I'm sorry, but what? So we supposed to have all these young people that some of them don't even got all their senses cashing us the fuck out all the time? Because I'd be damned if I'm about to let a whole mess load a young, young, young people like teenagers and people like 20 years old and your age or whatever your fucking age is, 27, cash me the fuck out. Because y'all don't do much of nothing but be on your phones all the time or just start shit like you just starting shit right now. And I don't mean all of y'all, but some of y'all, okay? I'm sorry, but it's a job. And at a certain age, maybe people, you know, first of all, let me just say this about the whole fucking email about Aspen. 
it's good that you want better for your mother. It's great that you want better for yourself and others. But I find it very, like, tiring when people like Aspen speak on what type of job they would and wouldn't do and what it should be for and who it should be for. You understand what I'm saying? Like, so flipping burgers should be only ran by people under a certain age, like in their 20s. Okay, like those are the younger people. They don't really have much experience. They're just starting out in the world. But yet we want them to run the motherfucking fast food joints or the Walmarts or what have, what have you, because they're, they're old enough and in that age realm of being cashiers. I would never be ashamed of what my mother did for a living. And you know why? Because that's my mother. And if she sacrificed her life and her well-being and everything that she wanted to do to take care of me and make sure that I was good, that I'm not about to be ashamed of no job she's ever done. Let me tell you, my mother has never had like the best of the best jobs. When I say this, meaning she has works in factories, okay, making bow ties. She used to go to Brooklyn on a subway, okay? And I would I would tag right along with her, okay? And she had one of those carts that you, you know, just had the two wheels. Not the big, not the big carts, not the big carts, but the smaller ones that was like the cloth, okay? And but it still had a little handle on the wheels, right? And my mom would get on the subway, it would be empty. Well, no, it wouldn't be empty because she would be bringing them back. And I would go with her. We would come from Queens where we lived all the way out there to Brooklyn. And I was like 13, I was like 13, 14, 15 years old, 16 years old doing this with my mom. She would go and she worked at a factory, okay, for, for Jewish people. And this factory, they made bow ties, clip on bow ties, regular bow ties, and ties. And I, I can't remember what else they made, but that's what they made, okay? That was the main thing. And she worked there in person for a long time. But then they started allowing her to work from home. And so all she would do was she would go to the factory and she knew them she worked there for years and they knew her they knew me they knew my family my little sister she worked there for years so she would go with her car you know she had her car and i think she had a book bag too i won the bags and sometimes i would go with her okay and she would fill that card up at her job with with all the bow ties. She had to make them. When I say she had to make them, meaning she had to put them together. They weren't even made from the clips to the bows to sewing the thing around it and, and fixing it. My mother had to do all that. And let me tell you, that was the first fucking thing that I ever learned how to make as a teenager. My mother taught me how to sew, okay? But that was the first thing that I ever learned how to sew and make with my mother. I would go there with her and I would have my own little cart too. Well, it wasn't little because, you know, it was the same size, but I would go with her and I'd have my cart and we would both go. And this was her job. She would she would bring it back by the end of the week and she would sit there at home and she would sew those things up because you know, she you had to hand sew those. That piece that goes over the bow tie, over the clip, you have to hand sew those because the metal is right there. And I would go with her and I would sit at home with her and I was she taught me how to slit the bow ties and how to put the clips in them and how to put. Yes, bitch, I was working like, OK, as a child, as a kid underage with my mom from home for a factory that she worked for. And these are the most amazing times that I can remember. So I don't really know about what job is for who at a certain age, but when you are with somebody in life and that's your mama, you support your mama. And when I tell you I supported my mom when I would go along with her and I would help her and then I would go back and forth with her and I would help her at home, I supported my mother. Okay. I didn't get no money for doing it, but this was how she fed us. This is how she paid the rent. This is how she took care of me and my little sister. Okay. So yeah, I was sitting there and I was making sure her funds was being was, was taking care of us okay my mother was a hard worker she didn't you know what i'm saying she finished school she got a high school diploma she didn't go to college but she was a hard worker she might not have been like an office type of person but my mama was a hard worker and yeah my mother worked at factories okay my mother working work my mother worked in warehouses okay she worked at burger king i'll never forget as a younger kid much younger than that age okay i had to be like five and six my mother worked at burger king that shit was like two blocks from the projects that we lived in with my grandfather and Every time there was like a new toy, she'd come out and she'd bring that shit home. But the toys wasn't as extravagant as they was like now. All I know is them toys was like this color blue. It was like a blue color. Every fucking Burger King toy was like this blue color. And you had to pop it off the plastic and put the shit together. But, you know, that's what they had back then. But she bring the home burgers. You know what I'm saying? Like, my mother did what she had to do. And, like, I respect that. And that's the part that you lack in, Aspen. You lack in the part that you respect your mom. You don't respect her. Because it don't matter if she was a motherfucking prostitute. 
It's a job. And she busts on her ass to do whatever to feed her kids. And that's the part you're not understanding. That's the part that you're not respecting. Okay. A job is a job. Like, I don't get it. People like there, you know, what's so sad about this, this world. And I can't even say this generation, but just this world in general, people will mock and ridicule and make fun of other people for what they do for a living. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's gotta be real fucking pathetic and sad when you can make fun of somebody for what they do for a living. Okay. For what they do, what type of employment, what type of work they got that they do for a living that is legal. That that's sad that there are people out there that mock, make fun of, ridicule, humiliate people for what they do for a living. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be from being a cashier, a motherfucking janitor, a street sweeper, a garbage man, a motherfucking recycling bin person, a motherfucking bottle collector, whatever, whatever, a, a stripper, a dancer, y'all claim y'all 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 don't realize like y'all are making fun of people that are doing something for a living now i don't know about prostitution being legal but it's a job you know what i'm saying every it's a job there's a job there's a service that they take care of for other people so i mean i'm saying but i don't ever knock nobody but what i'm saying is like even like with strippers there be people out there that not females for being strippers it's a legal motherfucking job we all y'all y'all knock that shit but y'all be the first ones to watch their ass jiggle and shake down that motherfucking pole like let me tell y'all something i don't knock no strippers for what they do for a living because i be at them clubs where i haven't been into one in a while but when i was going through i was making sure to, to pay my homage and respect and throw them ones down too because they probably got kids at home just like i do and they make it rain they, they doing what they got to do to feed them kids but it's a job and like who's making fun of somebody who's working a legal job at least they ain't going out here robbing folks selling drugs you know what i'm saying at least they're not murdering people or unaliving folks for, to get paid at least they're not doing that they 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 doing it the legal way and like it's sad because your mother's doing it the legal way who gives a fuck if she's a person that works at a gas station it's a gas station if don't nobody work there then who's gonna fucking how you gonna get gas you understand what i'm saying like y'all sometimes don't be making no motherfucking sense like yeah i get that part asking that you're 27 years old and you really haven't been on this earth that long to really realize that what you fucking said was stupid but y'all don't realize that sometimes y'all should just really 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 think before y'all say any fucking thing because what you wrote me didn't make no sense at all like oh well only certain people should be working certain jobs like i'm sorry but at your age i wouldn't want the country to be ran by anybody by your age i really wouldn't want the gas station to be ran by anybody your age because just from what you wrote me is stupid so i can only imagine if all of our places that where people needed to work to cash people the fuck out was ran by people of your age we should get the fuck done okay when we have experience your mother has experience okay when i say experience i don't mean experience as a cashier i mean your mother has experience in life and so what if she's a, a fucking cashier at a gas station first of all she don't even really gotta work because she's older she's 52 years old i'm 50 years old myself okay somebody gotta run the gas station somebody gotta make shit sure, make sure shit's in order and that goes to say with any fucking place, who is too good to be working as a cashier? Now, I understand we put our children, like you just said, though, my mother has raised us and put us through school. You didn't say she put y'all through school, but you might as well have said that because you did say that all your siblings, except for your little sister, who's 15, have gone to school and have been making careers out of what they've gone to school for. That means your mother done put y'all through the school. Okay, and what's the problem? Sometimes we got to sacrifice our own lives just for our children's lives. With that being said, let's talk about myself. I ain't never went to college, okay? Shit, I got my GED when I was in my 30s or late 20s, something like that, on my own, okay? I think I was in my 30s, on my own. All right. On my own. I didn't go to school for that shit. I had this big ass book that I would go to the library and get every two weeks. OK, so I had to learn it on my own. But it was a program that I went through through my section eight. OK, and that was one of my goals was to get my GED. So I will go and teach myself these big ass books and damn near rewrote each book because that's how I learned by writing down and reading at the same time. But I didn't have the best of jobs. I worked at Family Dollar. I also worked at Burger King too, like my mama. Okay. I worked at um I worked at a telemarketing place um where we would call people. We weren't selling anything. We was doing medical surveys. I worked there for I think it was like two, three years, three or four years. I worked on the phones and then I became the administrator assistant, okay, of that company. And then from there, 
I worked for RX Strategies, a pharmaceutical company. And then from that, I worked at Fidelis. Then I worked for out here. I worked as an administrator and I worked at a nursing home or a nursing center, rather, in Sun City out here. So, oh, and I forgot, I did used to work in Toys R Us when I was living in upstate New York. So I don't really see the big um, to do about anybody being too good to work as a cashier. Ain't nothing wrong with a good, wholesome job. That's what a job is for. But, you know what I'm saying? Aspen, why would you be ashamed of your mother? having a legal job. Your mother's an older woman. She really shouldn't even have to work that much because she does have three older children that have careers, okay? And that way, since the others live at home, except for you, that means that she shouldn't have to work as hard. You know, it's it's funny because... My daughter, Tati, she always wants to make sure that I'm good. Always. Tati is older than Aspen. Tati's 28. And my daughter, Tati, always wants to make sure that I'm good. You know what I'm saying? She always wants to make sure that my health is good, that my pockets are good. Always. You know, like I told y'all last week, she helped me buy these teeth. But when I was telling her that I was ready to go back to work, I wanted to get a job, she was just so worried. She just just kept saying to me, well, my mother, she's not going to be working at no no family dollar or no Dollar Tree around no rowdy people. That's not what my mother's going to be doing. My mother doesn't be supposed to be working like that. And she doesn't mean that as in I'm too good to be working, that type of job. But when she says it to me, she's telling me at the same time, because I don't want you on your feet all day. You already have issues with your veins. I don't want you in your circulation. I don't want you on your feet all day. You need to be at home relaxing. And that's how she feels about it. Not because, oh, I may be too good to be a cashier at a dollar store or a cashier at a gas station. But she just wants to make sure that my health is okay. You know what I'm saying? But Aspen, she's just ashamed that her mother is a cashier. And she doesn't want to tell any of her co-workers, colleagues, that my mother works as a cashier at a gas station because she's afraid that she would be made fun of. Here's what I think about that remark. At your big age, 27, your friends should not be making fun of you of what your mother does as a job. Okay, if you're 27 years old and you are referring to these people as your colleagues and not your co-workers, okay, you're making them sound a whole lot bigger than what they are. Your colleagues, not your co-workers, that if they're at your age, your big age, making fun of you, then, honey, you really need to learn about who to present yourself around, who to be around, who to what type of people to keep in your circle, regardless if you work with them, because just because you work with some people don't mean that they could be in your work circle. OK, because there's work circles, too. And if I work with somebody and they are 27 years and above and they are poking fun at me because my mother works as a cashier at a gas station, well, then that says a lot about their big ass, big age, trying to bully somebody into what type of career their parent does. OK, that says a lot about that person right there. Ain't nobody worried about no grown ass person poking fun at you about where your mama or your daddy work at. OK, at your age, you shouldn't be ashamed that your mother have a job that she works at and stands on her feet all day. You should be proud of your mother that she can be able to go to work and ain't asking you for a motherfucking thing. Obviously, that's why she's at her job, because maybe if you was to pitch in a little bit more, since you're talking so much and you don't live at home, then maybe she wouldn't be able, she wouldn't need to work at her job. Like, let's be for real. Who would be embarrassed? I would never be embarrassed by anybody or what they do for a living. I wouldn't care if you was my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my best friend, my mother, my kid. I would never be ashamed of what any one of my kids, friends, family members, loved ones do as a career or just as a job. Like, who are you to be ashamed? I would be happy that they had a job because a job is a job. That means you got some money in your pocket and you ain't got to have a handout begging me or asking me to borrow shit. Okay? I would never be ashamed. Let me tell you something. My mother, like I said, she worked those type of jobs. And when my mother was in her 50s, you know what she worked at? I think she worked there for like 15, 15 years. Or it might have been longer than 15 years. It might have been longer than 15 years. I want to say she worked there for like 18, 20 years. I'm, if I'm feeling, if I'm thinking right, she was working there a long time. Sears. My mother worked at Sears for a long time. Okay. She worked at Sears for a very long time. Like, you know, the actual in-person store, Sears. My mama worked there for so long and she made some really, really good friends. Now she was working there before I even had started YouTube, but she was working there as I was on YouTube. And I never forget, there were a couple of, there was this one woman that knew my mother only because she seen my mother on one of my videos and she lived in New York city where like in Queens, I think, cause my mother worked at the Sears in Queens. 
And that's where she lives. So I'll never forget one of my subscribers has said to me, I met your mother at work. She went up to my mom. My mom told me the same story that she went up to my mom. She said, are you April's mother? Either she said April's mother or Muffin is my lover's mom. I've seen you on her video. I never was ashamed of my mom working at Sears. You know what I'm saying? She spoke with my mom. She had a great conversation with my mom. She respected my mom. Like who, you know what I'm saying? Like my mom has been there for me. And even though we may not get along at times, we may not see eye to eye. We may not be speaking to one another at this very moment. I'm still very grateful for everything she's done for me. You know what I'm saying? She's busted her ass and she's worked jobs just to make sure that I was taken care of and that I have food on the table. You know what I'm saying? The same thing she did for my sister when she was working at Sears, okay? My mother worked and busted her ass as sometimes maybe a job that nobody else wanted to do, like a factory job, like I was saying, how she did the bow ties, you know what I'm saying? How she worked in a warehouse, how she worked at Sears. And when Sears closed down, you know, Sears finally had went out of business because she had made such great friends that were more like family to her. Um, some of them, she was she, she then went to work for Burlington and she worked for Burlington for some years also with some of those same people that left Sears. Well, they didn't leave Sears, Sears closed down. But we're at Sears. She worked with them at Burlington until she got sick with COVID and she wasn't able to work anymore like that. You know what I'm saying? So ask me, maybe you should be really grateful and be appreciative because your mom is able to work. She's able to stand on her feet all day. She's able to go outside and be able to make an income. She's not dependent on nobody, okay? She's able to do the things she needs to do to take care of her life and her home. You should, maybe you should just be thankful for that and stop having your, your, your head up in this clouds feeling like, oh, you're ungrateful or excuse me, you're ashamed. You're ashamed of what your mother does. Like I would never say that about any job that my mother would, would take on. Like I would never think that, but you know what? There are people like that in the world. And it's sad because with this day and age, sometimes people that have good jobs, like ER nurses, they still got to take on a second job because the economy is like for shit and we can't afford anything. So you better count your blessings while you can, Aspen, because you may be in that same predicament one day where you need to work as a cashier. God knows where, but just as a cashier anywhere else. Could you imagine someone being ashamed of their parent or spouse or friend because they worked as a cashier? Like beneath, she feels like the jobs are beneath her mother. Who the fuck are you to feel like the job is beneath you? So I can only imagine if you feel like your mother's job is beneath her or it's beneath you, then how do you feel about the people that clean your utensils that you use as an ER nurse? You feel like they're beneath you because they're 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 doing th they're doing that particular job and they get paid pretty damn good to clean the fucking utensils, okay? They get paid pretty damn good. Never be ashamed of who you are. Never be ashamed of who your family is. Never be ashamed of what you, your spouse, your friend, your loved ones do for a living. Just count your blessings because they might be out there with no job, homeless, or asking people for money. But instead, they found a way to make they hustle. Girl, ask me, how about you just get down off your high horse, snap into reality, and realize that your mother is doing what a grown-up does. This is what grown-ups do. We get jobs, okay? You know what's so crazy, though? I had thought about not even... Okay, so even though I addressed Aspen on the whole, you know, her ignorance on her mom's job... Let me tell y'all. Remember, I kept telling y'all I was looking for a job. I kept looking for a job. I kept looking for a job. And I and I was looking, still looking for a job. You know, I, I want to find the, the job that's perfect for me. Not like just know any job where I got to sit at home. I don't really, like, I really did want to work from home. But then I don't really want to work from home and sit on the phone all day for like eight, ten hours. Like, I can only imagine. Like, I, I did do that at a time when I worked from home for Amazon. OK. And for Walgreens as customer service, that wasn't a bad job. Also, I did that for a couple of the wig companies that y'all are very familiar with. But I don't want to do that. Like I work for myself from home and that's enough. But. Like I was saying, you guys, I want to work with animals. I want to either work at the animal shelter or just somewhere that has to do with animals. I love I love animals. I love animals. And that's just me. I'm I'm all I'm just really big on animals, animal love, taking care of pets. I'm just like a really huge animal advocate person. I love animals. And so that's what I want to do. And I just kept thinking about it. I'm like, what if I get a job like working at like PetSmart or something that has to do with animals? And someone from YouTube or whatever sees me and be like, Oh my god, I seen April, she's a cashier at PetSmart. Like then I was like, I don't want to work there. I don't want to work there. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to realize, I just said this, all of this that I just said, 
about never being ashamed of where you work because it's a job. And then yet again, I don't want to work somewhere because I don't, I'm afraid of what people will see and say about me if they saw me working at a pet smart, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I got to, Sometimes I got to practice. We got sometimes we got to practice what we preach a little bit more. Not saying not saying that I would work at a pet smart because that's not the type of job that I want. Like I really am not going to be able to you know deal with animals too much. Even though that's pet smart and people do bring their pets in, it's not the same thing. It's not what I want to do. Okay, it's, that's it's just that doesn't that's just for pets. I don't care about that shit. I want to work like you know around animals. Like so, I feel like maybe the only thing for me to do would be like get a job at like the animal shelters. You know what I'm saying? Like the animal shelters out here. And they're like, that's a county job. I wonder if that's like a county job because they have Maricopa County animal shelters. So I wonder if that's a county job or a city job. I don't know. But I love animals. So I felt like, well, I don't really care. People see me, they come to the animal shelter and y'all see me clean out an animal cage or help on the animals. Like, I don't really care about that because this is what I want to do. I get to spend time with the dogs, the cats, you know what I'm saying? Shit like that. But yeah, I don't know why I even told y'all that part, but I just did anyway. You know what I'm saying? It might be the weird. But either way, either here nor there, never be ashamed of what you do for a living. And I'm going to feel that way as well. Even though PetSmart is not my ideal job, that I, I wouldn't even apply there because that's not what I want to do. That really don't have too much to do with animals. You're just buying pet food for animals. Like, I don't really care about your pets coming in. I really want to help animals that are in need of help. That's what I'm I, That's what I'm looking for. Like, everybody's in need of food, but who gives a fuck about it? you just going to bring the food home. You're, like, not that type of job. But I just feel like, so what? Your mom has a job as a cashier. God bless her. Because she, she's standing on her feet all day. God bless her. But also Aspen did say, could you imagine the type of people that come to a gas station? Yeah, I can imagine. I've seen all different types of people come to a gas station. Some good, some bad, some really great people. Okay. My cousin, actually, my cousin, Christine, she lives in Virginia. That's my mom's brother's daughter. Okay. She, I think she works at a gas station. I she has to work at a gas station. I'm not really sure what gas station she works at. She has on a red t-shirt. It's not Circle K, but I always see her pictures on Facebook. And she's met like I, some, you know, entertaining people. When I say entertaining people, like she's met like, um, I think he was a singer or something like that. I don't know him personally, but obviously she does. He's popular or, you know, he's known, you know what I'm saying? A couple of people she's met like that. I don't know them, but you know, she seems to always be happy where she's at. She always has this huge smile on her face and I'm older than her by like a few years, but she seems to enjoy her job. So you can't knock something until you really try it. And I go to the gas station over here in Circle K and the one lady that works there behind the register, she's, she's black. She has a whole face full of freckles like myself. She's so sweet and so nice. Like, so I can only imagine the people that come there and the people that work there. Never knock something until you try it. Like, you don't know who you're going to meet, where you're going to meet them. You know what I'm saying? But ask me, get your fucking head out your, or get your, this girl, get the silver spoon out your mouth and be happy that your mom's able to get up every morning and go to work. And that's that. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. I hope y'all have like a blessed Thanksgiving, blessed holiday. I will see y'all in the next video. Stay diva and divalicious. Leave your comments below. I'm going to go give me a flu shot real quick from the grocery store because I ain't trying to get sick. Okay. Love y'all. Stay safe. Gobble, gobble. Don't eat too much. Okay. And save me a plate.